hello there! It certainly has been a while, hasn't it? But I have a very good excuse. I've been moving house. Again. In just over a year I have moved six times, count them six, from my mother's house into an apartment in Dublin, back to my mother's house for two months before moving to London into an apartment in Bayswater where I stayed for about a month, into an apartment in Lancaster Gate with my boyfriend Ollie where we lived for six months and then moved to King's Cross for another six months and I have just left King's Cross to move here. And I'm not someone who even really deals with change very well. I like to have my things around me, I like to feel very at home. And on top of that, every place that I've moved out of has been in some way kind of big for me or sentimental. Moving out of my mother's is of course difficult because it's, you know, it's my home. And that apartment I had in Dublin was the first apartment that I had sort of independently, out on my own, living with it crazy Spanish woman who I think deserves a whole other vlog all to herself. And then moving back to my mother's for two months was weird. It was a really emotional time because I knew I'd be leaving for London in two months. Then I get to London and I'm living in Bayswater for a month. Very temporary, living out of a suitcase. And then the next big step I take is to move into Lancaster Gate with my boyfriend Ollie, which is a big step in a relationship. After six months and a crazy, crazy landlady, we decided it was time to go. So on we moved to King's Cross. Now that move was big for me because it was the place that we moved in together, yes, but also the place where I first started vlogging. And it, it was awful. I look back on it now and I seem so nice and polite and shy and scared. I was so nervous and I wasn't myself, but I don't mind that it's really awful and it makes me cringe now. I mean, it's a testament to the fact that I did it. I was ballsy enough to sit down in front of a camera and just make a start. The whole YouTube thing just kind of started for me there. And by the time I moved out, I had maybe seven or 8,000 subscribers and you know, things were going really good. I'm standing on the exact spot where I lost my vlogging virginity. And I'm about to leave this apartment and it's quite sad because it's all empty. There's no pretty fairy lights or a submarine poster. Instead we have this sort of manky curtain and this terrible Picasso. Clearly mine is better art. My whole life is just packed away into boxes and there's just so many and they're everywhere. And I mean this, this is just a bag full of hangers. And I'll tell you what this is over here, this suitcase. This is a suitcase full of hangers. Who needs as many hangers? And our apartment in King's Cross was sentimental in other ways too. Yes, we'd already been living together for a while, and yes, I'd already been doing YouTube for a while, but by the time I left King's Cross, I had passed 20,000 subscribers, I'd made about 30 videos, and was in about 30 other videos on people's channels. I don't know, I think I was starting to feel finally like a validated member of the community, and I still don't 100% feel like I'm one of the YouTubers, but that's where it started to sort of happen for me. In fact, I was so sad about leaving that I tried to sort of stage a sitting while I lie in the fetal position in. And through all these moves, I always seem to be struck by the same two things, which is that my whole life condenses down into boxes. And at the same time, I'm hit by how many boxes there are. And I'm sorting through them and pulling out things that honestly, I didn't even really know I owned. I'm putting my books away on the shelves and remembering the experiences I had as I went through those stories with those characters and what time in my life I went through them at. And the same with my films. Some are good, some are bad, some I'm wondering why the hell I ever bought this. But they meant something to me at some point in my life or they remind me of something. And the same goes for pretty much all my belongings, actually. I know some people prefer to keep less things. They prefer to be quite minimalist about their possessions. And Alex Day is definitely like that. And I have a lot of friends who are, but that's just not me. I was talking to a colleague in work about it recently and he's very much minimalist. But what annoyed me about him was that he almost thought he was better than me because he's so minimalist. That he's got this, you know, cool, non-materialistic Buddhist attitude towards life. And he said, you know, my possessions don't define me. My things don't define me. If anything, I define my things. They're a representation of the choices that I've made to get to where I am now and I very much choose to have and to keep the ones that I want to have around me. And moving house, stressful as it may be, is actually a really good way to take stock of all those things. Kind of literally. And even though I have been made to take stock probably more than the average human being ever needs to, and even though this, I think, has been the most stressful move ever, it's finally coming together. And as testament to that, I'm making a video, which I've realised is the barometer for how settled and happy I am 
weirdly enough. So I hope you enjoyed going on this little journey of moves with me. If you did and you want to subscribe, please do so. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Hazel Hayes. I promise I do read every single comment. I can't always reply, but I do my very best. So until I see you here again, or until I hear from you on Twitter, salon. <laughs>